Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big. And it's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the <laughs> official amazing Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. Nothin', I'm a damn walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. What I mean, all I mean, all I mean on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. This long winded section is for y'all to do what I'm saying, all right? So, if you want to see all our visuals, go over to our YouTube channel. That's where you can see all our visuals. Because if you, I mean, hit subscribe, hit membership, you name it. Don't forget to hit that notification because that's how you're not going to miss out on any of this fire content that we bring in every single day. We're dropping content every day for y'all. All right. But if you, we do have stuff that is exclusive. The only way you can see the exclusive stuff is by joining our membership. How you see our membership is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section. There is a link that says join our membership. Click that link, follow the instructions. And that's how you can see everything before everybody else. Thank you in advance, and thank you for all the support. Yo, man, listen, man. Hey, man, we got a special guest in here today, y'all. He don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here, you done heard about him on the news everywhere. He out there bad. His, his old man put him out there bad. He wouldn't have never even knew who he was. I didn't even know he existed. The damn, I looked up, man, and I said, man, this, he got a son to rap. Ted Tarantino was in the building, right? Yes, sir. Michael Irvin's son. Yeah. Wow. Wow, well, the youngest. The youngest? Damn. So, so you, how old are you if you don't mind me asking? 25. 25? Yeah. Damn it. The one thing I can say, man, is we want to go down through there and understand who you is, how your background is. Of course, everybody know your daddy, but shit, we want to know you. So, so you're born and raised it. what part of Dallas? Shit. Uh, Dallas Carrollton. Dallas you Carrollton. Know, you know the area I'm talking about? Mm hmm. Like around Frankfurt, or Frankfurt and Toy. Okay. Far north, far north Dallas. And you were raised with your mom and dad in the same household? Yeah. Okay. Um, how many siblings? Three. Three? Do you know how blessed you were to have a mom and dad in the same household? Mm hmm. How blessed do you know you were? Extremely. Did you see all your friends had mom and dads in their household? No. Nah. No? Nah? You know, as kids growing up, it's like you don't notice stuff like that. You know, until you get older, you realize, like, dang, this no, I is. I noticed it growing up. I have over 300 cousins. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? They, not, they less fortunate, and I grew up around them, so. So you understood? Definitely. That's good. Wow. I like that. wow. I got, to, got, to, got to drop. Yeah, that's my drop in spot right there. You say you grew up around them cousins. Yeah. Now, when, when your daddy came on there and went crazy and was like, hey, you know, like, he ain't been in those places, man. That man grew up. He didn't grow up around all that. You know what I mean? What did you think when you seen him do that about your rap your career? you like, that's just the way daddy is. Yeah, that's, I mean, shit, that's, that's my pops. I see how y'all see it. I see how I see it. Yeah. yeah. That's my pops. So when you, when you seen him, when, when he done it, you basically, you hear about it on the news, right? And you basically, everybody's talking about it. It went viral, right? Yeah. And you were like, what the hell? But it's a good thing, and it can't be a bad thing, but it's a good thing because you everybody know now that you make music. Did you did you look at it that way when it first happened? I mean, when it first happened, I, I don't think a lot of people know this. I was actually locked up. When you were locked happened. up? Yeah. I was in a facility in East Texas. Okay. I was in East Texas doing a program so I could get reinstated back into my probation. Yeah. How long were you locked up for? Uh, six months total. Okay. okay. So... Yeah, I was, and I, shit, I learned, I learned about this in like October when it happened. I yeah. learned about it. Like the day after it happened, I called my baby mom. And the crazy, craziest thing that happened is the phones, like they do this all the time, but on that night before it happened, the phones cut off. Like they, they started like tripping, malfunctioning and stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't even call her back. And she thought, I don't know what she was thinking, but that shit happened the next morning. Phones came on at the same time I caught her. She was freaking out, telling me about how that shit was happening. I started freaking out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting amongst a, a whole bunch of, you know what I'm saying, people who gonna have an opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, Did you call him? Uh, yeah, I talked to him. I, I only talked to him about three times when I was locked up. But yeah, I talked to him like probably like a day after that. I think so. What was the conversation like? I'm not gonna lie, we was. 
I'm not gonna say we we was just talk, we were talking about it. You know what I'm saying? He was like, "Yeah, we gonna see what we gonna do from here when I get out." You know? Did yeah. you ask him why he said it? Nah. Nah, you ain't gonna ask your dad. That. My my son over there, he ain't for to ask me why I said nothing. He's not gonna question me. He gonna respect me because I'm his dad. You know what I'm saying? So I, but at the end of the day, he gonna feel a certain way. He probably gonna talk about it differently with the people he with deal with. Or but he ain't gonna be with me like that because I'm his pops. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But which is cool. I understand that part. I think a lot of times people don't get that. But I don't feel like that's right. I, I feel like not to argue with your pops or something oh, like that. Here we go. Because Women I feel different. like. Because okay, because thing, for me, people it. talk about mental illness and stuff like that, and depression and stuff like that. It's because people hold things in and not actually express their feelings. I'm not saying to argue with somebody, but actually say, you know, how you feel and say, you know what, I get where you're coming from, but this is how I feel. Even if you don't get a resolution, but just sometimes it's good to get something off your chest. When you get it off your chest to other people and not to the person who actually, you know, did something, then you don't get that feeling back. You know what I mean? You don't get no, no resolution, so to say. I, I think so. You get what I'm saying? I mean, a little bit. Not exactly. <laughs> no. Not exactly. No, because I think we different. I think men don't, we move different. Like, we don't talk like women, and you can't make us be like a woman. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, that's why women be having them gay friends. You know what I'm saying? Because they can get niggas that talk like women, and that's how they cool, they do their hair. I'm being real. This is a thing. Uh, they all have them. And not you, of course, but some women do. You know what I mean? But men is just different. We don't talk like women. We don't do things like women. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's a lot of times the reason why when we have our issues, y'all try to explain to it, it don't even be sounding right. That's why y'all hold everything you know in and y'all don't we let things do out. That. And yeah. that's why, you know, men have higher heart attack rate. That's why men have more stressful rate. Men have a now, lot men of Men have heart attacks behind a lot of different stuff, not just stress. Uh, it'd be things like, you know, we work a lot physically. Cholesterol. Yeah, yeah. We eat different. We, we work. We, we build stuff. You know, we build us. We build. Yeah, we build everything. The whole, when you go to pass all these new homes and stuff, some dude them built that thing. Yeah, Let's be real. That's true. That's true. So it, you, our physicality and the way we built up, it ain't the same. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so man, like, like, so no, really, what happened that day, like. I, I seen that, and, and to be honest with you, he was going livid on there, like, oh, um, and, and I'm about to get off my soapbox on it, but he was like, you ain't even, you didn't, did you go to the, to like apartments to do videos when you was in a million dollar home over here? Uh, no, nah, I just didn't always, you know what I'm saying, live in my dad's home through my teenage years, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You see what I'm saying? He, yeah. he was speaking on it like you had... I guess like you went to the apartments and did you know like your music video, but you really wasn't even living like that. And nah, I mean the thing is, I was actually really living like that because there was certain times that I was not living at my father's house, and I'm going over here by choice. Not necessarily, not, necessarily. not always. Most of the time, yeah, it's by choice, but it's more because you know what I'm saying it's father son. I'm, I'm I'm coming in a manhood. It's father son. We playing heads. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm skipping school. He trying to get me to go to school to graduate. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm I'm just, I, I was being ignorant. I'm being an ignorant kid. And like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I, I know it's not right, but hustling is just, it's just in me. You know, so I was, that's what I was doing when I was, I was going to an alternative school because I had got in trouble when I was like 15, sophomore year. Going to press one, I got kicked out of that school. I had to go to this, uh, like, this all boys, like, I mean, shit, and we, in Florida, we be calling it a tent. But it's like an all boys school. It's in Louisiana, you know what I'm saying? I had to do that for like seven or nine months, you know what I'm saying? And I came back home, went to the alternative school. And that's when I was like, shit, I had, I had my little, my black Audi Q7. I'm going to school, skipping class. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing all types of crazy shit. How much is a shadow of it of being Michael Irvin's son? Like, is it big I mean, shoes to fill? Is it a something to you? Because you've seen the kids on mm -hmm. uh, hip hop. Live, what is is it? Live. Some, what was Growing that up hip hop. Growing up hip hop. Right. Like you've seen that show. Like, 
is it really a shadow of some sort when you coming up under you know a legend, a, like, a legend that. like that? I mean, shit, I got a I got a big brother. I got a brother who got his name and all type of shit. So, oh, he going to do it worse. Yeah, yeah that's what you mean, he not even, he not even, it's not even like that. That's so like, it's it's like he he did the he did the route the right way. Like I I was always not like dedicated completely to sports since I was a baby. I wanted to make music. I've been making beats, playing the drums. You know From how saying? old? Playing keyboard. I couldn't even to probably like like. Since I started, I was I was twelve years old when I started engineering myself. Okay, you know what I'm saying. But I always been like rap, writing raps, playing with music, playing the drums. So I was probably around like five, six. You know what I'm saying. I got pictures and little videos of me doing that shit. So yeah, and all of that was so tough. It was just myself, my interest. We was more focused on like my family as a family. We was more focused on sports, working out. But where did you get that interest from if your whole family had, you know, sports and stuff? Where did that interest come from? I mean, we we in a traditional household, so it's not like I'm not gonna say my whole family just interested and dedicated in sports. Everybody, you know what I'm saying, like head first about sports. It's not necessarily like that. But we're a traditional household, so my father is the head of the household. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? So this is how my dad wants to raise. Mm-hmm. His kid, his sons, he wants to, you know what I'm saying? We, I was, I was six years old when I started running. I was running like four, six, four to six miles a day at six years old. Wow. You know what I'm saying? At six? At six. Four to Are six you, miles? Man, I'm trying to say, like, for real, four to six miles. Were you getting ready to play ball or something? Just training. Just training, something. training for football? Yeah. Not you just like, football. I would think tra- that's just tra- conditioning tra- you. All that, right? Yeah, just training. Yeah. We training, man. It could be it could be any time. It could be off season. It could be, we gonna train. Sometimes well, I think he was keeping y'all busy to try to keep you out of trouble too. Yeah. Dang, that's different though. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's early. I, I I just I never seen that coming. That's but I get it though because you got like I say again that that whole thing of being in the legend shadow. You know what I mean? You have a certain thing you got to do certain ways. If you do this or do that, you feel like you know, you might do something that where it might out the family. You don't want to be looked at like that. So does that stuff mess with you mentally when it come down to you walking and moving the way you move? You see what I'm saying? Because you got to realize you go do something. It ain't like when my son do something. Shit, he, could do, he, he done did stuff. I ain't going to put you out there, boy, but I could. But he done did stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, could, I could tell you, I could out him right now. And you know we, I talked to his grandma or somebody about it. And said, boy, you say, boy, you better sit your ass down somewhere, you know. But yours is different. Your shit, your shit hit different. You know what I'm saying? Your dad is loud. He on that thing. He acting a fool on game day. Everybody in the world love him. Some people hate him. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, when you do something, it ain't the same, right? I mean, shit. What you mean by that? Meaning, if you if you same. do something that ain't right, like my son and did stuff that wasn't right, like yeah. when you got in trouble with, mm-hmm. for the six month deal, how did that affect you? Did you feel like, damn, like I let the family down? I mean, I mean, man, honestly, I ain't necessarily feel like I don't let the family down because we my. I'm not gonna say my pops is accepting it, like me just going and doing that, but like he he understand it, like he done became understanding him older than I got. You know what I'm saying? This was recent. Yeah. I just came home in December. You know what I'm saying? So he done became like more understanding of like the situations that I'm, I be in. So it's not it's not like a a discipline situation. Like he feel like he gotta get on my ass, discipline me. You know what I'm saying? It's just man to man conversations. We'll be talking. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's 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 kind of like different from mine. Because when I got in trouble, my daddy was, and he didn't play them football or none of that shit. But I'm telling you right now, it was like I let the world down. You know what I'm saying? Like this nigga was tripping. You know what I'm saying? I done, I done so been, I said, I done been, been through it. Through it. Huh? I done been through it. It's not my first time getting in trouble. That's what I'm saying. I've been in trouble a lot too, young man. I, I done, I, I, not like me. 
You've been through some stuff, but you ain't been through what I've been through. You know? yeah. How I many times saying. have you been? But I'm just, <laughs> I'm just I know you, when you were shit. talking about the last time you um, went to, to um, down in East Texas, how many times before that you went and you got in trouble? Uh, I mean, I've been arrested most, like a lot of times. A lot of times. Yeah. I don't know. You ever I mean, put twelve in a box, twelve in a jury, go for a trial, nah, and face life? Nah. This shit get real. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm you know like, what I'm I saying? So, it. but it. I, it, when you done been through this stuff, you, you, if if it would have been like yours, to be honest with you, it's still big because of the fact of who you are. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So of course somebody somewhere some kind of way, it's effective because for sure Mike he got to be there for you just like if something happened with my boy. You know what I'm saying? Well, you don't have to be there for yeah, you. Because know, a lot of niggas turn their back on you. That's what I mean. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what make him a good father, though. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. What make, that's it's being that. You gotta be that. If you want to be, I mean, I ain't gonna say necessarily that's what make you a good father, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, our concept of family, that's, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? As black people, that's our concept of family. You know, be there for, our, if the father is in, a, you know what I'm saying, which is rare, if the father is in a child's life, we're gonna be there for the father. I mean, how, for the kid, you know? how, how about your mom? How does she feel about like how everything goes with you? I mean, my mom, her her health isn't the best right now. I don't mm. even really want to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm gonna leave that to my father to talk mm. about. Right. So, so I gotta ask this then. Um, so, because you said you were raised in a traditional household, I would think a, a strict household as well. Growing up, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So, because being a mother. Cause are you you're a, you're a parent now? You're, are you a yeah. father? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So being a parent, um, we always try to figure out how to lead our children in the right direction and not to have them fall by the wayside, not have them get in trouble and so forth. And you being a person that was raised strict and in a traditional household, how was it that you ended up getting in trouble and you know going down the path that you went down? How can a parent stop that from happening to their child? I mean, <laughs> I mean, look, man, I, you could try, you, yeah, you could, you, you could. Because you're a parent now, what are you going to do for your child to stop them from, you know, following that path? I'm going to do everything that I, that I feel like uh, that I see is the best thing in store for them while I'm still taking care of them. And then, like, give me an ex- give me some examples. I mean, if I could get them into the best schools, I'm going to do that. If I could. You know, if I could get them interested in some sports or extracurricular activities instead of... Because you went to the best schools, right? Yeah. And you were in extracurricular activities. Sports. Okay, yeah. so, but you still went that way. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to figure out. That's why I like to ask this question, because I've never been in that situation. But for you who have been in that situation, I'm trying to see. Because there's a lot of people who are watching, parents who might be going through situations. That's the reason why I like podcasts, because we want to help somebody... Not, you know, to solve certain situations. Yeah, well, I mean, look, it's not like I was just, uh, you know what I'm saying? I got ADHD, ADD, all, all of that. I'm just, a, I was just a curious kid. Like, I get into, I'll get into a lot of things. And I, you know what I'm saying? I've just been like that through my, my teenage years. I'm maturing now, I'm understanding, but I'm still going through things that I done did five, four or five years ago. So, I'm, that's the reason why I was just in jail because it was something that I was fighting for four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to go and do that. I would have never guessed that you were dealing with ADHD or any of that because you're sitting so. You, you know, look good, steady, boy. Shit, I'm trying to blame you. You, you, you yeah. come in there, you check yeah, stuff out. Your arms leaning back. I mean, just, you could have played football your damn self. I wasn't. I wasn't bad. You played pretty good. Yeah, I, I figured so. Shit, it's in your jeans. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I would think you play good ball, you know, could play ball, you know. But which you say your brother though, he was the one got it. Yeah, the older yeah. one. Yeah, he don't want that fight through the scholarships. He got yeah, it. did he? Did, he ain't. I he was. Didn't. I was a hundred percent projected to go to the University of Miami. Like, really? Yeah. I mean, I think it's if you put it up, it's probably still there. Was it important to? to were you, was that something you wanted to do? You love music, so you really were doing that as a fall. You know, like I, music first. Yeah, that's. Right. In my head, yeah, you know what I'm saying? In my head, that's what I was always yeah. thinking. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it's, if we working so hard to get to a point where we could do something in sports, 
You know what I'm saying? And why can't I wait that same amount to to get to a point where I feel like I could? You know what I'm saying? We trying to become the best. Why why I can't wait the same amount to become the best in what I want to do? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. I agree, but then, you know, everybody else is thinking something. In your mind, you fighting the fact of, it battling the fact of everybody wants this from you. You know what I mean? When you love music, and I can guarantee you that was happening because of the legacy of, and the legend of who Mike is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you love music and it's still staying true. You still staying true to what you love. And that, that's important. You know what I mean? Because I tell people all the time, man, whatever you love doing, that's where God is going to bless you at. You understand what I'm saying? If you don't love it, then you're going to do it. It's going to seem like work. But if you love doing something, you'll do it and it won't even seem like you're working. You see what I'm saying? Because you love it. That's kind of probably the way Mike is in uh, football. You know what I mean? Of course. He loved it. You know, and he brought us some championship. We ain't seen him. Hell, that was before you. What, that was before you were born, probably. Shit. Yes. Damn, you ain't even never seen us do the Super Bowl, have you? I tell you, all that shit y'all be talking about. I don't you ain't even seen, seen that. Shit. I don't know you ain't even seen about. it. You like nigga? When did y'all win? Yeah. You gotta go back and watch the old tapes. All I see is, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> And it's, it's fucked up, but all I see is my pops limping. All I see wow. is, you feel me? Yeah, I, no, and I get I, it. All I see, like. You see the after effects. Get, yeah, him having to get his knee drained. He just had to get fluids drained up out of his knee. To, yeah, because of the my old. Ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all I see. Yeah. It's not happening. I could go back and watch tapes and all that. But, but you see the after yeah. effects of it. My brother was on the field with him. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pictures of my brother walking around on the field. And he was a baby. But you never experienced that. I ain't never experienced all that. I mean, I done been, I done been on the field like after his retirement. You know what I'm saying? He always done been working with the organization on this and that, doing promo, all the type of shit. So we always around there. When we was younger, so I done been around. But now, while he was actively playing on the on the team, team, I never seen him actively play no football. Never. Yeah, I seen him do a little bit of flag football. Yeah, he but. Kinda, Got hurt when he did that. <laughs> so as Achilles. Damn. Shit. It was in New York for a Madden uh, flag football team. Everybody was there. Deion, Jerry Rice, everybody was there. And he ran in the slam route. Popped his Achilles. Had to get surgery. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. And I can promise you this, being an older cat, I seen your daddy play. It wasn't nothing like it. All that we doing now, Mike Irvin played. I understand that for I'm sure. I'm just telling you, I know from watching it. Yeah. I don't even watch football no more. But if he was playing in the way they played then, I would be watching it. Like, you know, I understand he he doing training. He doing training us. We in middle school. Yeah, doing, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We doing. I'm. I'm here. I was playing linebacker, running back, slot receiver. I'm playing a lot of positions. Yeah. And I'm going to defense. Hey, running the slot. In a slant, coming across the middle, I'm breaking niggas' arms and shit. Like, I'm hitting hard. Like, hard. I'm, I'm trying to, yeah. I'm, you li linebacker? I was playing linebacker, yeah. 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 Playing linebacker. That's I'm a linebacker. A of hey, that's linebacker talk right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say, so <laughs> let's talk about the music, man. We got to get into music unless you want to, you got anything? Let's talk about the music, man. Um, Real shit. That, that, it, uh, real shit on the floor, uh, mic drop. What? How was that when you did that? Uh, I enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? You think you the, like the atmosphere of me doing that? Yeah, thing. yeah. It was, I enjoyed it. I liked it. Yeah, you feel good about the the, the whole drop? Yeah, what yeah do I you, feel good about it. What, like like when you when you do that? What's your preparation? Do you punch in when you when you go in the studio, or do you write or what? I just punch in. You like to punch in? Yeah. See, like when I say I started engineering myself, and I was like. 12 years old. At first, I started making beats, and then, like the process of making beats, and the programs that I was using, I just seen how it like went. And I have always tried to record, like writing and stuff, and recording it. And like me being a 12 year old, and I'm ignorant. I'm thinking I, cause I figured out punching in. I'm thinking I made that shit up. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, damn, I'm gonna figure this shit out. Like this shit is all uh, crazy. Yeah. But, like I said, man, I got I got ADHD, ADD. My my attention span is not 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 too well to be, you know what I'm saying, just writing stuff and especially writing into rhymes and reading it exactly how I want it to come off. It's, it don't come off how I want it to come off. So I punching in is really the way to go. 
for me, you know what I'm saying? And I could make I could make songs with real emotion. Like when I punch in. You know? Which which do you think is your favorite best song? Uh, that's out right now. That's out right now. Mm. Nothing else? Nah. Nah, nah, nothing else. It's a good song, though. I just know my best song is not out. Y'all all say that. Everybody that come on here say the next song is the best song. There's some stuff that you've done already that had it. For me, it's not the next one. It's the, it's the last one I recorded is the best oh, one. See, that's that, that, yeah. that's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah, pretty much. I yeah. Think so. <laughs> and the next I one, you're going like to be the hardest, one, too. The next one is the best one leaves ever for the last one. I'm not doing that. Like I'm, The last one is the best one. I get it. Me? Yeah. But how, let's talk about nothing else then. Do you, like, is that, that one that... What was the process for you doing, and why? What? Where were you coming from when you was thinking to do that song? Uh, mentally. You wanna know where I was coming from mentally? Mentally, uh, I was thinking like I got an hour and a half left in this session. Uh, I feel like I could probably make another song. I told my dog dialogue, show me some beats. I found a beat, he threw it up, and I just started freestyling. Like, that's how it came about. That was my, that's what I was thinking. But it's, it's so, I'm, I be so in routine and just rapping, so I don't really be thinking about like what I'm saying too hard. It just be like that. I kind of feel like that's like a blessing. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it, it come to me like that. Like it come to me how, almost like how a song is supposed to sound. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. When, when do you, when, and, and going back to Mike again, Mike Irvin, like, well, what was some of the things when you knew when he locked in with you to say, I support your music and, and I support what, you, what you're trying to do? What do you mean? When was the time when you felt like he really got behind you and what you were doing as far as the music go? Yeah, it was, I mean, real recent. Probably real recent. Really, real recent? Yeah, when I, when I started showing him, like, well, usually he would hear, hear about my music or hear my music from other people around. So you know they gonna try to show him like the yeah. you know, ignorant shit that nigga got. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how people live. Yeah, they yeah. showed you the, the ratchet and stuff you can find and show the nigga. Yeah, I showed him. I showed him real shit though. He liked it. He liked, he liked it. it a lot. Yeah. How? What did yeah. that? How did that mean? How did it make you feel? Like damn. I mean, yeah, it was cool. But you knew he probably would like it if somebody done showed him some stuff where that's why he went off on that on the show like that. He probably seen the worst, the worst, you know what I'm saying? You were, you couldn't even defend it because you were locked up. I mean, shit. You see what I'm saying? Whatever he's seen. I couldn't defend it, yeah. I he defend. like, Man, my son and like My baby mama was posting shit. I'm like, <laughs> like, stop doing that. Like, I'm trying to tell her to stop, stop posting shit. She's like, yeah, I'm going to stop posting shit. <laughs> and I'm getting on the phone with my homeboys and shit. And they like, man. So you posted a, uh, da, da, da. I'm like, nah, man, man, go low, man, go. I gotta tell her to take, it, man. She was just, she was just trying she to. She was trying to keep you alive, yeah, bro. She was trying, she to, trying to keep the music alive. She was trying to help. And I think that's noble of her. But then that shit, it's run, she running it, and yeah. Mike seeing it, or whoever's showing it to whoever. But you know me, I'm in your mind when you locked up, though. Let's think about it. You can't see what's really going exactly. on. So you in that whole thinking all kind of stuff. Exactly, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm hearing like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta understand, it's like a couple of hours. Not even a couple of hours, I'm talking about days. But like, I'm up thinking about like, what's going on? The phone's cut off at a certain time and cut back on. Yep, so yep. I'm up thinking about what's going on and I get on the phone. Every time I get on the phone, it's something new and crazy as fuck. Like, Joe Budden talking about it. Where's Cleef for talking about it? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> Like, what is going on? Like, this shit crazy. Cameron talking about shit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. Like, Cameron? They're like, yeah, Cameron. You can't even out here say you know? nothing. You can't say, you, you could have got a lot of interviews oh, like, if you would have been. Like, Rico from Pay the Fool talking about me, man. That shit crazy. Like, I'm tripping. Like, I don't know. That shit was just crazy. And he on lock. He, and they yeah. don't even know it. Because nobody knows you locked. I didn't know. Yeah, nobody really I knows. didn't know you locked. So nobody knows that. So he's just sitting there trying to figure it out. Just like when I lost my partner when I was locked up. You can't understand. You don't even know how to do nothing to understand what's going on with the situation. You just basically taking a little bit you can get 
And then harnessing that, but then your mind going so many places, they don't realize how far your mind begins. It's going here and there and can't even do nothing. Yeah. That's hard time, actually. I, I try to stay positive. Just try to stay positive. Yeah. Read something to try to keep your mind off of it or something. But no, that's dope. I, I, I love to hear that, that. At least you here now. And I want to see where this music going to go, man. Like you say, the, I can't wait to hear what's coming next, man. How do you, how, how many, how many videos? How many visuals do you want to do when you do like an EPR project? How many videos do you feel like you need to do? Yeah, realistically, I want to do a video for every. That's every it. Check on the project. That's what Bun yeah. B said when I interviewed him. He said because of all these cameras and stuff we got access to, there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing. You know what I mean? A, a visual with every song that we drop. Yeah. You agree with that? Of course. Very least the truth. And I think that's hard. But well, it's just gonna be hard to. How to keep up? I record a lot of music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. I record a lot of music. All right. Like I told you, we were just talking with some people before this. In between that hour that we had to get ready, I recorded the whole song. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Do you? you and in the process, just that fast. You feel like you? you it's good mute, good essence of music, or if or do are you taking your time, or is it don't take you? You can spit them out like that. I mean, it, be, it it took a lot to get how I am right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? It's been times where it's been that, but once I get in like my, like my my groove, you know what I'm saying? Once I get in my, or I feel like I'm just in motion with like the, the, the thoughts that I be thinking of, the cadences and the, the pockets that I be in when I'm rapping, man, everything is like no time. You know what I'm saying? It don't take no time. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think the process is so important, man. Who who would you like to work with? Like if you if you pick somebody that you want to do go in and do some music with. I was just thinking about this. Uh, I gotta think. Hold on. I was just thinking about this. People ask me this all the time, and I be so wrapped up in like focusing on working on how I sound. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I mean, there's a lot of people coming out of Florida that I like. And, you know, like, I, I like, uh, so his name El Snapo. I like El Snapo. El like, Snapo? Uh, yeah, he from Florida. Uh, I like, uh, it's a young nigga from, I think he from, like, like Dallas, Fort Worth, like, Dalway type shit, Arlington type shit, you feel me? Named Jace. He be streaming and shit. Yeah. I like his style, I like I like his music. I'll make some shit with him too. If he would be up to it, you know. But I I really like that's just some right now shit. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That shit could change. It could change any time. Yeah. I get it. I, I agree, yeah. I agree you never know like times changing quick. Shit stuff happening. Life be life and stuff be moving. You know what I mean? So I get it, you know. I don't know, man. Like I said, the main, I think the main, the most important thing I look at is, is, is like the production, the consistency. Um, I think the whole brand, like a, like a shirt brand or something to go with, you know what I mean? Yeah. All that stuff is so important. You know what I mean? As you build up the brand, as you build up all these social media platforms, all of them things are important. I mean, Mike, I'm, I don't know how you feel about, you know, Dion, I and I got to ask you this before we go to the next question. Dion uh, Sanders just jumped on Yellow Beads' song. Did you hear it? I ain't hear I heard a snippet. I you heard a little snippet it. of it. What'd you think? I mean, that, was, that sounded good. I'm know. just asking. I, you know, good. I got to ask you. You're a musician. So I got to get the answer out from you. You... I care about what you think. So he, you know, he. I hadn't heard him on no track with nobody since "Must Be the Money." You know what I'm saying? Now that was before you were born. You know what I'm saying? But I think it was a good look for for him to jump on something called Dion is just like your dad. These guys are legendary, especially in the, from Dallas. Like ain't nothing, ain't no nothing, and they were cool. They were close friends. They probably still close friends. You know what I'm saying? But that was a that was that, I I seen him do that. Would you be willing to do something like that with any? Uh, would you ever do anything like that with any uh, pro players of it? Probably Shaq, huh? Shaq got some. Well, without rap with Shaq. Yeah, Shaq. I mean, I think Shaq the one. Sure. You don't think, think Shaq got Shaq nothing? Yeah, probably. I who? I think Dame Dollar is the one. 
Oh, oh, she got her face. I don't even know who the hell that is. Damian Lillard. He's actually hard as hell. Is he? He, 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 he plays football. He plays basketball. Hey, he go hard. Nah. I go with who the D. I go who with Shaq, play? nigga. Now nah, I said play? what I said. Shaq. He from Detroit. I'm old. Miles, you know? Miles, Miles, <laughs> Miles bitches. I think he be oh, yeah. he be going stupid. Shaq just did one with zero. So did. See, that hoe went hard y'all, too. Y'all talk about shit. Listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm young nigga generation. Y'all yeah, talk yeah. About shit. That's see, see we too old, man. That, that young nigga, he ain't. Y'all, you 20. What you tell me about something? Yeah, you, you still, you try. I'm at a tail of the You with the New see. Dallas type music. I mean, if we're going to call you man. something. Cause you, but my shit, man, I don't even like. I couldn't even. Do you live in Florida, or Dallas? You live in Dallas, right? Or you both Dallas. places? I live in Dallas. Okay. But, you know, I, I live in Dallas. You be considered the new Dallas. Hopefully. Nah, this thing was not way outside. Of no, it don't matter to provide sound. I'm telling the timeline. I'm going by the timeline. I don't Anything to have now? That pop like, is the new South. The new, oh, that's my nigga. There you I go. Be that boy said the new Dallas. South. You know? Now you talking, nigga. Now the old boy, done, my ears done perked up. The new South. Y'all heard that? That boy said the new South. Yeah, how, how the song um, Never um, never End came up? Uh, I was on House Red. Went through beat. In my studio, I had, I had a studio. Wait a minute, you say you was on House Arrest? I was on House Arrest. I was on high for 10 months before I did the six months. Damn, boy. Yeah. So I was looking through beats and shit in my studio. And I heard the beat, it was real like, a, it was like a real like synthetic pop, like damn near like some Prince time sounding shit or some, yeah, like some super, uh, like Michael Jackson sounding shit. Shit, I just loaded it up, made a little channel still setting for it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just listening to the music. I'm I'm listening to what what song is supposed to sound like. Like you know what I'm saying? Like when I hear the beat, like it's pretty much like I'm thinking like these words sound like they should go on this part of the song. Like you know what I'm saying? So I just do that with the melodies that I got in my head. You know, that's that's really how it came about. I, I wasn't thinking too emotionally in a like time of me making it or nothing like that. I just. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking about just listening to the music, you know. Wow, I think that's I think that's live, man. The process is so important. People don't realize. And another thing, I'm gonna say to you, the process is to be is to be visualized. You understand what I'm saying? I want to see the process. I want to see those times when you go into the studio. I want to see that. That's today's society. Want to see the behind the scenes? Yeah, that's that's content, bro. Yeah, I definitely want to get that shit right in. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's important because that's the legacy. That when people look back at you and they start to research the music, the more de- more they can find in these days and time, the more they're gonna draw to you. You know what I'm saying? I think that's important. We gotta play a little bit of part of that never end. Play it. Yeah. What yeah. you got? Yeah. Where we gonna? Oh, where is it at? On the phone? It's on your we phone. Play never end. We, I, don't, I don't really want to preview wanna... never end for everybody right now. Oh, I mean, oh, look, look, that's up. Like we can, yeah, we can do a little fifteen seconds. Yeah, we're not gonna play sure. the whole song. Sure, yeah, yeah, let's do a fifteen second snippet. Just to the hook, and yeah. then we'll clip it to fifteen. Yeah, we'll try to hear exactly. So like can get yeah, I definitely do. Like so That's enough. We don't give them too much. Mm-hmm. I like it, man. You got this. It's, it's like a. I don't know. You can tell it's a newer sound. You know what I'm saying? You're right. It ain't like, like nothing. Curve, like it ain't like no. no. <laughs> yeah, I made I made that song over a year ago. Over a yeah. year ago. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. Go back and he's like, oh, I made this. And I was like, you got a lot of songs, amazing, don't like, you? Yeah, I, like, I got a lot of love. Wow, you love you, in, in your studio here. That, that's, that's a good thing. You're always in the stew. Always. That's a, that's hard. And you say you do your music for the South, representation of the South. Yeah, that's what he really said. Loud and clear. Mm. No, because South. I'm saying um, some rappers be like, it's better 
to represent and have your sound for where you're repping rather than just for, you know, sounding like you from Atlanta when you're really not from Atlanta and stuff like that. Because a lot of rappers, they rap according to what city is hot. They yeah. adopt their ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But people are like, no, it's best for you to rap according to where you're from. I mean, you can go back. I, like I said, on my, on my sound card, you can go back years. I'm not acting. It's, it's been like this. You just go in here, a younger me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be the same situation. Imagine probably like four or five. I don't know, four or five. Years, that's Maybe. Like, it still streams like crazy every month. That's like Songs on SoundCloud and it's like, wow. Yeah. It sounds like yeah, I mean, like, yeah. And I, I feel like Florida been getting like a little curve. They've been getting a little, they flowers lately. How do you feel about Kodak Black? You keep mentioning Florida. I keep thinking about Kodak. I'm not the. I'm not like I. I fuck with Kodak. I fuck with Kodak tough. But you know what I'm saying? I'm not just like the biggest Kodak fan. It's more like um. I'm more of a fan of like some of the records that he has. Okay. okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're an artist. Yeah, exactly. I'm not a huge fan of anybody, really. That's why it'd be hard for me to answer that. Like, look at the craft. Yeah, it'd be hard. Yeah, I look at the craft. That's, that's, that's exactly what, exactly it, what it is. And I naturally do that. Nobody told me to do that. Yeah. Nobody, it's just, that's just how it is for me. How hard was it being on house arrest and recording and stuff? Because you know what happened with NBA Youngboy, how he was on house arrest all that time and good, just went through all the stuff he was going through. Like, how hard was it for you trying to, and he, he was up in Utah, of course, but when you came home and you on house arrest and you trying to record music and you trying to stay out of the way, how hard was it for you? Yeah, that's difficult, man. A lot of it is, is real difficult, you know, because, I mean, there'd be other shit going on besides just me being on house arrest. Like, I gotta go back to my, my pops crib. I had my own house, and then I got on house arrest. That's, that's the address on my ID. I had to go back to my father's. Go back. My, how was you know Mike saying? being on house arrest? Hmm? Was he, he was, he, I mean, he my father, he, he worked a lot. You and so you, you just at the house? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But it's not just me, though. Like, a lot of family over there too. Yeah, yeah. You know? But you were still able to? Was you doing the studio inside of the house? Nah, it's a, it's like a, it's a garage type thing. I set up, you know. That was like your safe haven. Yeah, yeah. yeah I recorded that and shit. Yeah, yeah. But at least you got it done though. Look like you, it didn't slow your work down. It really, nah. you, you was able to adapt. Nah, it was more like training though. Like you know what I'm saying? It was more like I'm. Like, I locked in, I'm recording two, three songs a day. This is over the period of like 10 months. Well, I'm really trying to like find a, a song, a sound that I know I'm really um, like pursuing for, because I've been doing this shit for a long time, like experimenting. So uh, when I was on house shows, I was really looking for like a, a sound, like a specific sound. And I pretty much, I'm, yeah, I'm into it now, like, I got like a go-to sound, like when, when you think about me, that's gonna be, you know what I'm saying? When you hear that sound, you think about me. Wow, you know, it's, you know you, you, we, we look at it as like, oh, maybe it's a bad thing, or you had to move back and go back to your father's house or whatever. But just like, like my son, my son 30, you know, and he always with me, you know, and I thank God for that. You know, we got a relationship where he'll pull up, like he the one got you here, you know what I mean? He, he seen it and he was like, man, you wanna do why? I'm like, yeah, his son. I don't have a problem with that because I like, you know, because I'd heard your story, you know what I mean? So I wanted to rock out with you. Um, yeah, um, like I said, I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm going to be watching your music like crazy, you know what I'm saying? Try to figure out how to, man, get me a, a yeah, I might be the one on your, your song, shit. Let me try to get my gangster talk together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, something real gangster, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but <laughs> at any rate, I was asking you about uh, NBA Youngboy, like, uh, because, I, like I said, that house arrest thing is, is difficult. I'll go back into that a little bit. Um, I don't know if they, he, I don't know how he got in trouble at the house, and I don't know his whole deal, but I just know being in that house like that, it got to be like, damn, I want to go somewhere. You know what yeah, I'm saying? They put you on 24 hours. Like that. If they do, which was what I was on. You was on, on 24 hours. That's what he was on, too. That's what he on, too. You couldn't even go yeah. nowhere. Yeah, you can't go nowhere unless you're checking in. You got to check in every month still, regardless of what's going on, like, you still gotta, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of shit you gotta take care of. Like, like how how long did was it you was doing the music to you? Like, damn, I wanna go somewhere and do something. I can't do this shit. 
I said, I thought about it, but it's... You just, just stay like, down. It's like, doing, it's like doing time. Like, you're not going to touch yourself. Yeah, you yeah. You're not touch yourself. Everybody coming yeah. over, telling you about what they doing. You can't go nowhere. Yeah. They telling you about the experiences. Yeah. It's been, it's been a couple of times where I don't like... I have my, my, my partners and shit just... You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm seeing them niggas move around. Yeah. I you like shit, that. man. Yeah. God. Yeah. It be something dope going on, don't it? It seems like the dopest yeah. thing ever. Yeah, okay, dude. <laughs> How you say you got two brothers or a brother and a sister? Got one brother, two sisters. One brother, two sisters. How's your brother like when when you going through all your difficult times and you know he was there for you since y'all don't yeah, yeah. y'all always yeah. chop it up. We we didn't really talk so much when I was locked up. When I was on house arrest, we talked. We played basketball together and shit. We, you know what I'm saying? We just because y'all how many years apart are y'all? Fifteen months. Oh y'all close, close. Yeah. So he ain't see really the football, but he was out there though. How he get on the field? Fifteen months older than you. I mean, I was retired in ninety nine. I was born in ninety eight. So he was he was able to get he out there. Born in ninety seven. Okay, okay. So basically, he, he was, was there a, for the last year that my pops was playing. Yeah, yeah. Like three years old. Yeah, three years old. So yeah, three years old, so. yeah man. Uh, do you feel like that's been a a uh, thing that opened some doors for you or blocked some doors for you, being Michael Irvin's son? A blessing in the case. It, it's both, ain't it? Yeah. Because cause it could be a good thing, but then it could be a bad thing. I think uh, ultimately, uh, in the end, in the future, like, with time, it will become only a positive thing, a good thing. I think so, too. You know what I'm saying? You know why I say that? Because I, I think I agree with you. Because cause whatever you go through, Mike been through a lot. You know what I'm saying? And that make him stronger, you know, as a man. So all them other dudes, they ain't been through what Mike been through. Mike just went through some stuff a little bit while back that he beat, that they don't talk about. You know what I mean? But I just see that as growing. You know what I mean? That's a That makes you stronger. Like I've been through a lot. And when you see Mike being the pressure that he done been in through all the field and having to deal with, having to be away from family cause all the mess trying to keep everything going, I know that that make him a stronger man. You know what I'm saying? And I know he love his kids, like all the rest of us black men. There's a lot of black dudes and I ain't excluding white dudes. You, know you say, if you do, I don't give a damn. <laughs> but I'm saying it's a lot of black men that love their son. That's why my son's sitting there and I know, I know Mike love you, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter what you do. We gonna love you through it. You know what I'm saying? Cause you 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 part of us, bro. Yeah. So yeah, that ain't going nowhere. So even when he talking online, you could tell it's like, man, my son is. But you could tell the love. You know There's what I'm saying? A lot of niggas out here who people ain't in that position. And right. People gonna say the same shit about them though. You feel me? No, you're right. You're right. But I just I love the fact that it that 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 happened. As crazy it may may seem, cause that give you a leeway to take the take the. It really gave you a, a a leeway to take the 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 the, the, the ball and run with it. Yeah, cause it's just, you got to run with it though. The timing was a little bit better, but yeah, I know it. Me, I know it. Me, yeah, but it, you still here. Look, think about that. That you can do. You you could talk about this, but you can. There's so many things you can do with the music. You know what I'm saying? It's an opening. I just say embrace it. You I know what I'm saying? When everything happened, I still had about like two months left. I said that. You did? Well, oh yeah, you still had to. <laughs> like I said, I did not know you was like I did not know you were going through nothing when that happened. I thought you were at the house on the couch with your toes curled, looking at the TV like nigga, that nigga tripping. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's why people don't know. Think about it. From the outside looking in, we don't be knowing. How would we know that you do you think he was locked up when all that was going on? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Nobody knew that. Yeah. Only one would know that is family. You know what I'm saying? But I appreciate you for coming on the show. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, Touch Tarantino oh, yeah. on Instagram. You want something else you no, want? No, keep to? going. Keep going out. Uh, I got, yeah, you just look up Touch Tarantino on YouTube, Touch Tarantino on Instagram. Wow. Yeah, I got to ask you this too. Um, after you and you, you know, your dad mended ways and stuff like that, mended up. Um, Y'all about to do this restaurant, going to this venture oh, together. Oh, yeah, I like forgot that. So um, tell us about this restaurant. What's the name of it? It's called Playmaker 88. In the colony, you know. What's in the colony? Yes, what That's kind of food? Area. What kind of food should it's, we expect? Like sports bar, sports bar type shit. Okay, you know makes sense. Makes sense. When is it opening? Uh, should be doing a a soft opening this upcoming Wednesday. So, okay. 
Yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm excited about that. So you're going to be there? Yeah, I'm going to be there. Okay. Is Mike pulling up? Yeah, of course. It's going down. Of course, yeah. So what inspired this venture? Because y'all could have went into any other um, joint venture together, but why a sports bar? Uh, it was the place that it used to be. Uh, we used to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we just we just know the people that they, they family friends, so we bought it we bought it from them, and it just got like you know what I'm saying the, the building we got family ties to it we don't been there a lot so. Okay, yeah. you're excited going into business with your dad? Yeah, I'm excited about it for sure. That's good. Is this your is this y'all's first venture together in the business? Uh, in something like this in a business where it's like it's, it's millions of dollars to handle, yeah, something like this, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling. I'm, I'm definitely coming up there at some point. I work, so I, I, I'm, I'm gonna roll through. So you know when the grand opening is gonna be? Uh, not officially. We trying to. I mean, my partner, he want, he want everything sped up because we in the finals right now. You know what I'm saying? So he trying to push everything right now. That's why we doing this little right. soft opening. And a lot of people done, you know what I'm saying, recommended against it, but that's what he want to do. So. What, what you got? You got some? Would y'all got some burgers up in there? That's gonna be. They ain't got no catfish up in there. It's really just burgers. No, burgers and wings and, and stuff. Crazy, you gotta though. come and see what's in there. Ah! <laughs> check it out. I'm coming, man. I'm coming. I'm telling you. I gotta pull up and check it out, man. I'm coming anyway. I'm a black business owner. Like I said, we've been here 18 years. You know what I'm so saying? So soft opening from so what time to, to see, what time? I love to see that. Yeah. Do you know uh, what time? What time to what time the soft opening? Yeah, they haven't even. Yeah, they have even. Oh, okay. Sure but. I make sure to let y'all know. Okay, let us know. Yeah, just make sure you let, let us know. We're gonna pull up. Me, but, me and the wife will come through and definitely support. Maybe right. my son been off field. He not coming. He is gonna work. They working that ass out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. But thank you for coming <laughs> to our show. Yeah, nah, we we'll appreciate you, man. Like I said, man. Anytime you need something, I'm over here. Yeah. And I've been over here. Me and my wife been married for 21 years. Mm -hmm. Why are you looking at me like that? I know you know. <laughs> No, I know he knows. It's been a long time, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you need me, I'm here, man. And, and and we family first over here anyway, so it fits, you know. Right, so just let us know, man. Uh, we're going to be listening to your music, and we're going to be we rooting for you. So if it's something you could, we can do, if you're putting something out, you got an EP coming or a project coming or something you're trying to launch, just let me know. Right, sure. And I'm going to rock that all out. Sure. I promise you, all right? Yeah. Check it, man. Been another great segment. Man, we love you. Yeah, love, man. Been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.